Today I'm going to talk about this old VCR here. It's a Panasonic forehead Hi-Fi Stereo Omnivision VHS VCR. This particular VCR I found at the office. We were doing a cleanup and it was sitting there and I thought, oh, I remembered while I was going through some of my old stuff, I had a couple tapes I found. And um, looking at these old tapes here, this looks like it just has some home movie footage. And I have two. This one says Christmas 1992. But these are the only two tapes that I owned. And I actually wanted to see if I could, A, play these, and then B, if the footage on here is still readable, I wanted to transfer this information onto a computer. Now, a long time ago, I used to have a Sony Hi8 video camera. It was an 8mm camera, and that's what I did all my recording with. So any of the footage that's on these VHS tapes is actually transferred from 8mm onto VHS. So the quality is actually going to be worse than it was with the Hi8. But years ago, I had a whole lot of Hi8 tapes, and I transferred them all to DVD. Here's a JBC uh, mini DV camcorder as well, if you remember these. Uh, the battery is not here at the moment. But these are the ones I used after that Hi8, and I had all of these. It's actually not that many. This is all the tapes I had. So what I recently did is using a FireWire card in my Windows 10 computer here on my bench, I transferred all of this footage off of these tapes and onto my computer. I'm always concerned that tapes will eventually not work. They do have a shelf life, and if you don't keep tapes in a good, cool, dry environment, they actually start to degrade. So these videotapes, though, I don't really know how old they are. I have no idea if they even still play. So now I have this uh, VCR. But I don't know if this one even works. I, it's unknown history. I haven't even plugged it in. It may not work at all. But I'm actually afraid to put one of my tapes in it because if the transport mechanism is bad, it can actually damage your tapes. Now, luckily, I just bought a vintage computer. And for some reason, in the box with that stuff was a brand new Sony VHS tape. Premium grade, still in the shrink wrap. This is a perfect sacrificial lamb. This is <laughs> I will put this tape into this VCR and we will see if this works or not. But first... Let's take the cover off and take a look inside. So this VCR I think is from around the year 2000 and this is basically nearing the end of the life of the VHS system essentially. And this VCR is so cheap and plastic. The whole chassis is made out of plastic. All of this case here just had a metal lid but everything else is plastic. They have lowered the price down to as cheap as possible to manufacture these just very inexpensively. Originally the first VHS VCR that came out was in the 30 pounds range. It was a tank. And if you watch the old videos on YouTube, it was a top loader so that this big thing came up on the top, you stuck the cassette and pushed it down and it had a physical play switch and a stop and rewind, just like an old tape recorder basically. Built like a tank, very complicated inside. As you can see, the circuit board here, it does go under the entire mechanism here. It's from here to here, but it's a single-sided circuit board. We can't really see much of it. This is the power supply section over here. Here's the RF tuner. There's some connections here. I'm sure there's some chips and stuff. On the front of this VCR, you know, we have a channel up down. You know, just a few buttons. The buttons are so, you know, cheap things here that as you push on the buttons, it just sort of pushes down on these micro switches here. So it's super cost reduced. Now the transport mechanism itself is what you see here. This can't get any smaller than you see. This is this is what has to exist for VHS. I mean, they could have made the VCR basically this big, you know, as wide as this mechanism here, but that's the limiting factor. But of course, all of this mechanism has to move around in the exact same way that it used to in the very first VHS machine, the way that these cap stands, move the tape around the head. That has to be the same as the very first machine. Let's just take a look at the back of this VCR here. So obviously I said this is a Panasonic and here's the manufacturer date, June 7th, 2001, or actually it's probably the 6th of July, 2001. This is international. Model number PV-V4611. This has some dumb technology called VCR Plus. Essentially what VCR Plus is, is an easy way to program your VCR. So you look in the TV listings and say you want to record the 6 o'clock news. It had this 5 or 6 digit code next to each program. 
And in the in the VCR, you had a button, usually a VCR plus button on your remote, you pushed it, and it would say, please enter the six digit code. And you just type that six digit code, and it would automatically program the timer on the VCR to record that program. Uh, you can see this VCR has the RCAs for right and left stereo audio, video in and out, and it has RF in and out, no digital tuner, of course, this is from 2000. So I have no reason to believe that this machine is broken. It looks fine, you know, there's nothing, there's no tape jammed in here, everything looks okay. But you never know. So before I put my tapes in there, I'm going to test it out. We'll test it with that cheap tape. Okay, so I have the power connected. See, it just has dashes here, hi-fi, VCR, and there's like a red dot, whatever that means. This is the blue screen here. The line you see there with the blue is not even, it's even to me, it's just the scan rate is 60 hertz on here, and that's what it is on my camera, which is why you're having that conflict. But if I hit the play button here, no cassette, please insert a cassette. I can record two line one on here without the remote, it has a record button on the front, and here's my Nintendo, plug it in, we'll actually record onto that tape and just make sure that the record playback is fully functional on here first. Let's get this on line one, which should be the back, oh, there we go. Yeah, we got sound. Alright, excellent. Looks good. It's very clear. Here's the tape. I have taken it out of the shrink wrap. Remember these labels for VHS tapes? What a, this box is so cheap. There we go. Let's stick this in. Alright, see that's loading up the... Ah, uh, that sounded bad. Let's hit play. No, well, I don't know why that's what that squeal noise is. It made us some kind of a squeal noise around the cap stand here, or whatever this pinch roller is. So this here, I think, is the standard audio head. Also, the tracking. This, of course, is the spinning head that it wraps the tape around. Let's uh, stop and eject the tape so you can see a close-up look at what that looks like. That noise is not nice. Wow. <laughs> Sounds pretty horrible. It seems operationally fine. Let's rewind here. Okay, there we go. Now it's rewound all the way. So let me hit the record button. I can't even tell what... Oh, it's in SLP mode, which is the slowest, worst quality mode, but there's no way for me to change it because there's no buttons on the front of this thing. But I saw that pop up on the screen. And here we are recording. So let's let it record a little while. You can see the black tape here of the cassette wrapped around this these rollers here and it's wrapped all the way around this rotary head here which is spinning without this spinning head video recording wouldn't really be possible any kind of high density video recording system will use a spinning head like this even the mini DV 8 millimeter Betamax all of them alright so we've recorded for a couple minutes let's hit stop rewind Okay, it's queued up, so let's see how the recording worked. Okay, I'm queued up, I have the lights turned off, so maybe we can see the picture a little bit better on the monitor. I'm going to hit play, and what we see here is recorded Nintendo footage. It looks fine, there's no dark area like there is on the camera. See, if I move the camera, it changes it. But it worked. Uh, there's, there's sound, um, unfortunately it looks kind of cruddy, but that's because we recorded in SLP mode. So good, the VCR works even with that weird squealing noise. I'm going to put one of my tapes in there and see what happens. Okay, here we go, one of my tapes. It's definitely a little dirty. Right there. Wipe off this dirt. Shouldn't really touch it with your fingers, but... Now that squealing we hear, it was doing it quite a bit just now when I was ejecting the other tape. I'm sure it has to do with a slipping belt. I think if I take the mechanism off, there's probably a little belt under there that is probably dying. There we go. <laughs>
We got Christmas footage from 1992. Wow, cool. Okay, so I'm I'm stoked. This thing is working. I need to transfer this footage now onto my computer to stop these tapes. Ooh, this does not look good. That's my father from 1992. So very cool. I am going to... It's actually playing back quite well. I don't really see any degradation. Oh, wow. There's me as a kid. <laughs> this is crazy. Well, kid, I was... Well, I'm pretty excited that this VCR actually works, even as old as it is. The belt might break, so I need to kind of keep an eye on that, but Sonar seems to come and go with that squeal. While it's playing, it's fine. It seems to only make that noise during transport operations. Now my problem is I need to figure out how to get vo video footage from this into my computer. I no longer have any analog capture devices. I'll probably have to buy a little USB capture device that can take the composite video from this VCR and digitize it. I do recommend if you have a lot of videos that you recorded from when you were kids or family movies, whatever, you probably should look into getting them off of the tapes and into a digital format. High quality digital file format and back those up to the cloud. So you won't lose those. You can get a new computer, you can copy those files onto it and you have that footage. It's just not lost on things like this that you just can't play anymore. Anyhow, if you found any of this interesting, give me a thumbs up. Thanks for watching. Bye.